What you are about to watch is an example of a cardiology phase tutorial. This phase is the second phase of the second year, so students are fairly comfortable with the process by this point in time. You will notice that the students pretty much direct the progression of the group. The tutor will interject when he feels it is necessary and will also quiz the group when he feels it necessary. But I want you to pay particular attention to the way the students interact with each other and the dynamic nature of the process. There are a lot of materials on the table. Several of the students go independently up to the board and try to help direct the student learning. And there are also students seated at the table that play a fairly active role in the discussion. Anybody got a preference? Where we start? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did everybody read about the curves? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be a good place for me. Pressure volume loops. Pressure volume loops, atrial pressure curve. As it begins, the students decide where to start the discussion, and then they launch right in. Which one do you want to start with? Uh, I'll start up here. As you see, at this point, the student has gone to the board and obviously has drawn a diagram and is in the process of explaining that concept to the students. It is important to notice that he is not giving a lecture. He is really asking for input and guidance, not only from his fellow classmates, but also from the tutor. In this case, the tutor is sitting towards the smart board. What does atrial pressure going up have anything to do with the ventricle? Oh, the valve's closed, so it should still go up with filling. Okay. Yeah, the V is just the filling of atria. Right. I mean, you're filling the atrium the entire time. The aortic valve closing. You're it's filling the atrium, atrium this atrium atrium entire time. Now, the tutor steps up to try to clarify a point, but again, it is not like a faculty member standing up and giving a lecture. He, too, is being interactive and giving positive reinforcement to the group. This entire time. Your pressure is dropping, yeah, but there's a reason for that. Is the atrium relaxing? Yeah. So I guess the bottom point is atrium is relaxed, and then the V is the upward rise as the ventricle as atrium fills. Atrium can't relax anymore. His job is to facilitate the discussion and to clarify misunderstandings when possible. Instead of just relaxing the volume, you're now just increasing the pressure. Okay. So. The bottom of the exercise then is atrial relaxation. As you see, the student takes back over and helps facilitate the discussion. Or it distends with more filling, so the pressure goes up. Okay. So I also want to do the ventricular curve. Anybody? Because I really don't want to stand up here anymore. <laughs> The student at the board decides he is not qualified to lead the next discussion, or perhaps he is tired of leading, and so he really says, I will stay up here, but only if you are willing to really help me. This is where the group really shows the beauty of the group process. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> the passive one? Mm. No, it follows the anchor. Right Just over the hump down to the and then shoots way up. Mm -hmm. It's actually, like it's actually on top. It's superimposed onto the, onto the atrial. Lots of active discussion, lots of help from the group, and then another student steps up and in essence says, I understand this a little better. I will lead the discussion if the group will help me. Alright. Alright. Let's talk way through it. Alright, so the pressure in the atria rises because the atria contracts at A. That contraction sends a bolus of blood into the left ventricle. And that's and at that point the pressure in the left ventricle starts to rise. Alright, let's get more blood in it. Right, and then as you have the isovolumetric contraction. Which would be that first A set. Okay. Yeah. Right, because that's what we drew in between those yeah. two lines. There you'll have an increase in the pressure. So it's just the volume's staying the same, but it's contracting, and then this is where the pressure is.
Roger gets enough that they uh, so I want to put aortic. What's the abbreviation for aortic valve? Yeah. I just we got AV valves down there too. I know. You can get A7. So that's where the pressure gets big enough in the or large enough in the left ventricle that the aortic valve opens and then uh, keeps on squirting out some blood into the aorta. And then the pressure in the ventricle decreases enough that the aortic valve will close. So in that descent would be your isovolumetric relaxation? Relaxation, yes. I hope you notice from this the students are fairly relaxed in this environment. They have drinks, they have food. You can tell by their posture and their body language that they are comfortable with their fellow classmates and comfortable in front of the tutor. That allows for them, in this safe environment, to be willing to contribute to the discussion, even though they may not know every detail of the concept being discussed but they are willing to share the information that they do know with the group. You should also notice that while there are books and notes on the table, for the most part, the students who go to the board are relying on their memory of the information they have read and the input from their classmates. This is a much more useful way to illustrate concepts and to test each other's understanding. It is not merely regurgitating what is in a book. You are creating it new from your collective understanding of the concept. Now sometimes the students do have to refer back to their textbooks and their primary reading, but this usually occurs when nobody at the table quite understands well enough to explain the topic. Now you see the tutor steps in and tries to clarify that point so that the tutorial doesn't get bogged down with everybody rifling through their textbooks. But you'll drop it and I'll just have a little bit of a, then I'll rebound as, as the chamber starts filling again so then the pressure will increase back up again. And that's what the dichloric notch is for. As you see here, the two young women are helping each other clarify a point. Ideally, that does not go on for too terribly long. If it takes just a couple of minutes, that's great. The idea is to involve the entire group as much as possible. That is one of the beauties of this group. This is a very active tutorial room and there is no one leader. Everybody is contributing. Again, it is not as if the tutor has set a game plan for everything that's going to be covered in group on this particular day. He is guided by the topics the students choose to discuss. You see the tutor went to the board in this instance because the student asked a specific question and by going to the board he was able to better facilitate the explanation for that student. Clearly the students understand that a part of group is to have difficult concepts clarified. Now for the most part they depend on each other to clear up those concepts but frequently a tutor will also provide some insight to their understanding. Well, I don't, okay, I don't understand how the pressure goes down and then goes back up if you've already closed the valve. How would the pressure go back up after that? Because the heart's the continuous the, flow of you've, that. You've got the, you have, well, the aorta has elastic energy in it. Right. Stored energy in it. And so it's able to com, com, uh, compensate for that afterwards. Again, this is another student who has gone to the board, but it's the same format. He is willing to go to the board and do the best he can with the help and guidance of the students. Then, once the students start interjecting, new questions arise, and other students help explain concepts or questions. So it's a very dynamic process. Increase the contraction. Yeah, same structure. Yes. The same. Clearly, tutorial is not where the students learn the basic science. It is where they integrate and discuss concepts of basic science in a very integrated fashion. ESBR, 
because we haven't because we have, because we haven't changed contractility with the preload. It's been the same. Mm -hmm. The afterload we didn't change the afterload either. So the afterload pressure is the same between the two curves. Therefore, the insystolic volume has to be the same because we haven't shifted our ESVR. You're speaking Chinese. Just tell me where to draw the line. <laughs> okay. Here. The ESVR line is the top line. Okay. Like like That's these uh, these that we drew right here, the yeah. straight lines. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. And then you just point the point on that. Use two points to make a line. Oftentimes, the tutor will pose specific questions to the students in tutorial. In this case, you see the tutor asking the student who has gone to the board specific questions to try to understand why the student created the diagram as he did. This series of questions is clearly not fear evoking. The student is comfortable saying, I don't know. This type of questioning will get the student to understand in greater detail the basic science related to the physiologic response that is being diagrammed on the board. This line. That's why this line. Through this process, the student at the board, as well as the other students in the room, will walk out of tutorial with a much deeper understanding of the concept that is being discussed. Through both of those. That's what determines where my ventricle is going to end up is determined by this line. That's why this line and this line, the two lines should be the first lines you all draw on these pressure volume loops. Because that tells you, once I get to this point, I move it over to here, I know exactly where that's going to be. That, this line determines where point three is going to be. This curve determines where point uh, four is going to be, and then you add your stroke going to it. Alright, so that's what determined where that point was going to be. That's why you say you have decreased throat volume. It's not because of the afterload problem. The afterload problem is accomplished there. Your heart can only squeeze that much. It is critical for students not just to reiterate the words that they have read, but to actually be able to understand at a much deeper level the words, the topics, and the concepts. It is this level of understanding which is facilitated by a very rich discussion. Throat volume will decrease, and then you get the line like you were saying. Because we haven't changed contractility, yeah. both point threes have to follow that same word. And you'd have to change the contractility in order to be able to, I guess, get the same end to stop volume. And in preload, you're not changing contractility, therefore, the ESPVR stays the same. Now, oftentimes during a group, the discussion of one topic is completed, and then it is up to the faculty member or another group member to say, okay, what's next? And then the group moves on. Yeah, we discussed why the, the shunt changed. So you can get from there. It is a process that will vary from group to group and from day to day within a group, but the goal of tutorial is not to have a single student or faculty member play the role as leader, but rather the goal of Mercer's problem-based curriculum is to have a rich, interactive discussion of the basic science underlying the clinical paper case.